today. One of my first videos going back a few months ago I actually was doing stuff with circuit boards and I made a component tester from um, another fella that I saw on YouTube that I follow and he, he's, he's really good, uh, Stone Slice. And this is what we made, it's a curve trace tester. So basically what it is, is if you want to test uh, a resistor or uh, if you want to test well, uh, most electrical components, capacitors um, and stuff like that, you can put them on this, you can put them on an oscilloscope and it will tell you if they're good, bad or indifferent. But what I found with this was, because it's obviously very delicate, this has got damaged because it's not in a case or anything like that. I've had to glue these and one of the legs is snapped off and it's just, if I use that like that I'm, I'm going to damage it because of, obviously I'm in a garage and stuff and I'm not, you know, it's just going to get damaged. So I have another idea and what I've done is I've made this. This is just basically a normal everyday um, container, food container and what I've done is I've drilled a couple of holes in it and I'm going to put the circuit board in the middle. And I've got the lid so when I do everything this is going to be inside here so if it gets broken or chucked it can't really get damaged and these here they're going to be for the probes coming out of the oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope is going to come in and the probes are going to come out but the best thing about it is it's in a Tupperware box and it's not going to get damaged. So basically all I've done with this Tupperware box, I've drilled a couple of holes in, I've put the, a couple of the BNC connections in, I've drilled a couple of holes in the bottom and I've just basically put the circuit board in. So there's no point in me showing you that. All I'm going to do today, or in this video, is we're going to show you how to etch a PCB. And hopefully this way, I should have this for years, it's never going to get damaged and it's going to going to be good. You can buy these, don't get me wrong, you can buy ones but personally I just prefer to make it because um, it's a bit of fun, you get something to do. This is just a normal copper PCB, nothing special, one sided copper. I just drilled a few holes in it to sit in. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make this, we're going to put this in there basically, so we're going to show you how to make, I'm going to go through each individual video, but this video is just going to be how to etch this board. So you need a board, what we need to first do now is we need to um, obviously get all my fingerprints and all the marks off this. And what we're going to do is you can use wire wool, um, I haven't got wire wool unfortunately, I've got some wet and dry sandpaper. So I'm going to use maybe 800 wet and dry sandpaper, I'm going to get all my finger marks off this. We've got some fluoric acid then and we're going to put the stuff on, etch it and you're going to be sorted. So, let's get stuck in. Now all I've done is I've got some 800 wet and dry and I've just basically spent a couple of minutes sanding it all down. I'm using gloves just to stop my handprints going back on them. So that's ready to go. What, and the way to cut a board is you can use a hacksaw or I just use basically a Stanley knife and just kept scoring and scoring and scoring it. But any sort of hacks or any, anything like that will do it. Now, the most important thing is, this is my circuit board here. And it, one of the most important things, it's reversed. Because when you flip it over and transfer it, so it has to be printed reversed. And this is also what's very important. This is printed on a um, laser printer. You can't print this on an inject, inkjet printer, it has to be printed on a laser printer because we're, we're trying to get this black mark to stick on our circuit board. So laser printer, reverse it, stick it on, sort it. And the way to get it on is put it obviously wherever you want it and I happen to want it in the middle. And then the way to do it is literally get an iron, so our iron is on and you're literally ironing it on. So all I'm doing is just going to literally, and you have to be obviously careful because this board's going to get very hot so I'm going to use this rag to hold the board. Um, but we basically need to iron it on. Now you need to iron this maybe depending, could be for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just as soon as you're convinced it's all on. So I'm just going to literally keep moving this iron and keep pressure, it's important to keep an even pressure. This is going to take a few minutes so there's no point in solving all this. 
So once we've finished ironing it, we'll turn the camera back on and we'll show you what it looks like when it's on. Oh yeah, don't tell me missus, I can use an iron. Alright? Ah, uh, it's a fucking family show. <laughs> it's... Hang on. Alright, recording? Now, YouTubers, we've more or less done it. And for you eagle-eyed people out there, there's no holes in this one. And no, we didn't mess up the first board, so we had to quickly cut another board to make it look like we'd, we know what we're doing. I messed up with the first board. And I think I've messed up with these. I think you need photographic paper. This is just normal paper. But anyway, we've got the design on the board, but there's a few little gaps. And that's, that's okay. Because what we can do is... Just literally use a black sharpie um, and join in the gaps and we'll, we'll dip it, we shouldn't have a problem. So I'm going to do that now, we'll turn on the camera again uh, when I'm just about to dip it in acid. So yeah, uh, what I've done is I've actually traced it all out by hand again because like I said I think you have to use photographic paper so there's a bit of a fuck up there. But anyway, this is only an experiment, I'm not 100% sure I know what I'm doing but we're going to find out. And we just wrote Leon and Johnny and Bodget and Leggett, so hopefully that should be left in the circuit board as well. If not, it's not really a big deal, but it's just something I thought of afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is literally I've got a container. I'm going to drop that in. I'm going to pour the acid in it. You have to make sure you get something non-metal. So what I'm going to use, I haven't got a glass. You can use a glass stirrer. I haven't got a glass stirrer. I'm going to use this bit out of a pen. And because you just might need to agitate it a few times and just you know flick stuff over it. Um, I think it's about 20 odd minutes you leave the acid in for chloric acid. This is the stuff, hasn't been opened. Now you can use this over and over again, so don't chuck it out and waste it. So you, know, you can you can keep using it. But that's what I'm using. So ready to use. So, see what happens. Oh, it's like Coke. Right, just enough to cover it. And we'll let it go to work. Leave that in there for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, what happens also when you use photographic paper is the paper kind of sticks to the board and you have to then drop it in boiling hot water and peel the paper away. We didn't have to on this because this basically just peeled off, but it didn't really leave enough of the toner behind it. So uh, photographic paper is the way to go. Uh, what you could also do, which we didn't think of at the time, but you could also make all these lines really squiggly and long if you wanted to, just to make it look a bit cooler. But you have to make sure you keep the gaps the same, because obviously the gaps um, are for the different size components. If the gap's too big, your little component's not going to fit. So we're just going to leave that now, literally, and uh, we'll turn the camera on, and it's done! Now as you can see what we've got is we've just got the circuit board left and all the black mark is still on it. it took about 20 minutes, half an hour or so to actually etch all the the, the copper that wasn't um, protected away. So what I'm going to do now is again get some wet and dry sandpaper and I'm just going to rub all the black off and hopefully what should be left is just the copper. That's the plan. And uh, yeah we should have our circuit board made. Right now as you can see, all I've done is drilled the holes, through the holes, and I've uh, wet and dried all the mark all the black marker off, and as you can see it's left the circuit board, the outline of the board, the budget and leg it, and everything else on it and the Leon and Johnny. Now because I used the Sharpie on all of it. What you might find is if there's any if there is any little bits you've maybe missed, don't worry about it. Now I don't think I have, I think I'm okay. But if you have, you can just put a bit of solder between them to join up the actual um the arms. It's not a big deal. But that's it for the first video anyway. Uh that's how to make a circuit board and um 
as you can see very simple what I'm going to do on the next video is obviously start soldering all the bits on and um, getting it set in there and, that, and getting it to work putting all the wires on for this so it actually plugs into my oscilloscope a lot easier uh, I'm going to need a switch here as well I think I'm not sure yet I'm going to, I'm going to see that so yeah that's it look hope it helps don't forget thumbs up and subscribe don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one